Hello. We're starting at Salisbury Museum, as you see, and we're going on a walk around Salisbury, looking at the streets, why some of them are named as they are, and also why they're in the places where they are. You will see behind me the entrance to the museum, and we hope to see you through our doors soon. Well, we've walked away from the museum and we're just about to go out into what we might call the city. And this is St Anne's Gate, because there used to be a chapel up there, a little church where people prayed for travellers, named after the mother, of, the mother of Jesus. And you can imagine, guess, what the name of the street is where we're going to walk now. Now, this building over here, which you will see has got the royal coat of arms on, it's there because the king, King Charles II, after one of the battles that he lost, stayed there, hiding, and the soldiers who were looking for him were just the other side of the road, and he could hear them talking, and it's now called the Chapter House. But it wasn't in those days. Now, as you see, this is called Friary Lane. Now, a friar was a man who dedicated himself to prayer, but also for helping poor people. And before King Henry VIII decided that he didn't want such a thing, there was a place for the, people, the friars to live down here. And so that's why it's called Friary Lane. The brick building you may have seen when you were shown the lane is a very old house which has been there since about the 1600s so that's one of the very old houses of sorts now we're standing still in St Anne Street and the gap between the houses over here is the way down to a place called Bugmore which I will co we'll come back to later. And then by the side of it, there's a beautiful house, nearly 300 years old. Now you'll notice along St Anne Street, all the different houses and how different they are. And they've all got different types of roof. So we know that they are fairly old houses. The one you see further along with the pale yellow and all the wooden windows, we're now going to have a look at it because it is one of the most interesting houses in this street. So here we are outside this beautiful old building. It's, as you see, called the Joiners Hall and it's probably somewhere over 400 years old. It's called the Joiners Hall because it was the group of men who are called joiners. They're skilled carpenters. And everybody who had a job, if it had to join a club, a guild, and this was the house where they met. Notice the beautiful carvings above the, the bottom windows and the people can be seen underneath the big windows and also the little tiny panes of glass. And that's because in those days, nobody could make big sheets of glass. So your windows would have been full of little bits of glass and lots of lead, as you can see. Now, this street, as you see, is called Love Lane. The houses along here were, were only, they're only about 150 years old probably and they were built for the workers of Salisbury. But it's called Love Lane because in the days when the cathedral had been, not been there more than a few years, this was where lots of ladies lived. And they sold themselves for people to use them in whatever way they liked. Now this is another street, as you see, called Trinity Street. Trinity means three, and it's because in this street, which has got lots of interesting small houses in it, there is an arms house, a house for poor people. And we've got lots of them in Salisbury, and it's called Trinity Hospital, because the church 
inside it is dedicated to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And it's over there, just by the, after the sign saying, One Way. So let's go and have a look at it. Well, here you see we're outside Trinity Hospital, after which the street is named. And it's got there the notice founded by Agnes Bottenham about 1370, rebuilt 1705, and then modernised about 40, 35 years ago. And this is where poor people came. Alice Bottenham is connected with Love Lane and she made a lot of money and left it for the poor people of Salisbury. And here's this beautiful building. The windows, as you see, are with stone surrounds, so they're called mullions. And if you look through the window, you will be able to see there are some archways and the chapel, which the people used to have to go to, is at the far end. And now you'll see the beautiful front of the building. And above the door is the sundial, a sort of clock, but we can't tell the time by it today because the sun is not shining fully. Now here we've got the name of a place where there was an industrial site as we call it where things were made and it's brewery lane so you can tell what was made here until about 30 years ago. The buildings now are very modern and there's nothing left of the old buildings. Now you can see the name Gigant Street. And those of you that are clever enough, if you put IC on the end, it turns it into gigantic. And that's because we believe that it was along this street that the tailors had their hall, and this is where the giant lived the giant that you can see in Salisbury Museum when you come to visit us. So it's really Giant Street, but it looks as though someone couldn't spell giant. The other thing to mention while we're here is that the road that we are on runs straight across and it changes its name and there's another road going from left to right. So you can see that we've got a crisscross where the is like that and that the reason for most of the streets in the centre of Salisbury being like that is because that is how the city was laid out built in the 1200s and each square was called a checker so think of a drafts board or a chess board and that's what it was about and every single square was named either after a person a church or a building that was there, like a pub. Here you see it's called Penny Farthing Street. Now you all know what a penny is, do you know what a farthing is? Perhaps I'd better tell you. A farthing was a quarter of a penny, a fourth of a penny, so it's Penny Fourthing Street, Penny Farthing Street. And it's said it's called that because the men working on the cathedral, who were the labourers as we call them, the people who had to lift the stones and lift the wood and wheel things around, lived here and they said they weren't being paid enough money and they wanted to be paid a penny and a quarter a day, a penny farthing. And so eventually the people paying their wages agreed and so the street where they lived was, is called after their pay rise. 
And remember, a penny in the old days was not as worth what a penny is these days. It was worth a lot less. And if you were working in the, for the cathedral and you wanted to buy a fat chicken for your Sunday dinner, you probably couldn't afford it because it would have cost you three pennies over two days' wages for one chicken. As you see, this street is called Greencroft Street and it's also over on the other side and that's because it goes down to what we could now call a park, a croft, an area of where there is land that used to be used for growing crops. Behind this sign over here, which has got Greencroft Street, you will see a very oldish building, not very old, and that's another one of Salisbury's almshouses. And this one is named after the person who left the money for it. It's called Bletchingdon's Almshouse. And so a, a, a merchant, a shopkeeper called Bletchingdon left money. And only, I think, three people lived there because he wasn't as wealthy as Alice Bottenham who founded Trinity Hospital. And then if we look the other way, there is a road or a street called Gilder Lane, and you'll notice the different sorts of houses that you can see along the left-hand side of the road. And the bollards that are there, the metal posts, remind us that in the olden days, back in the 18th and 19th century, that's what would have been along the side of the road to stop the coaches, carriages and carts, crushing people against the walls. So that's a very old way of showing where the pavement is. Now, we're at what we call the council house. Now, in the olden days, this was on the edge of the city. So this beautiful house, which again must be about 350 years old, with restoration done later, was owned by a rich family called the Wyndhams. And you'll notice over the front door, there is a little statue, and that is of Saint Edmund, who had worked in the cathedral here and then went off to be the Archbishop. And right next door to this house is St Edmund's Church, which you'll see the tower of past the yew tree. And you know why there's a yew tree there. Yew trees were used for bows, for archers. And then if we turn and look the other way with our back to Mr and Mrs Wyndham's house, you'll see part of their garden. And this was given to the people of Salisbury to be a space for them so they could breathe lots of lovely fresh air. Nowadays, unfortunately, there's a big main road nearby, but it's still used by people from Salisbury and you might be able to see just the other side of the tree, there is a climbing frame and that's where the children are allowed to play. This is St Edmund's Church, which you saw through the trees. It's now Salisbury's Arts Centre. You'll notice the big tower, which looks to be at the end of the church. But actually, before the 1650s, it was in the middle of the church, because all the space from the tower where my stick is, all the way down to where the daffodils are, that was part of the church, but it fell down. And nobody wanted to rebuild it, so they just made sure that this part of the building was kept for worship. It hasn't been used as a church since the 1970s, but it's a very old, famous church, and it was built here on the edge of the city because Salisbury in the 12 and 1300s was a very rich city and there were lots of people here and there weren't enough churches for them and so this one was built. Now here we are standing in a street called Endless Street, Endless Street. 
at the moment it doesn't look anything other than slightly much a bit of a mess but if you look down this way where I'm pointing my stick you see it, it is actually quite straight if you can see past the bus and going the other way we're past some scaffolding you see a cream coloured house right down at the end now in the in the old days but really before Salisbury was built this was the main route to get to old Salem Castle and nowadays it's not endless because it looks as though it stops but in the old days it didn't and we're now on the corner of the market square and here is the end of endless street and I'm going to show you how we know that this was the old way into the city so here on the ground you'll see that there is actually a walkway with stones on either side to show that this was an old route right across the middle of the market square for people to walk well before Salisbury was built and certainly before 1227 when the market was started but as you see today they've got market stalls on the footpath which perhaps is not supposed to be done. You'll also notice over the other side the market inn which obviously was there for the people when they used to come here to sell their cattle and their geese and their sheep as well as food and plants as you see these days. Now this is the poultry cross. Now you know what poultry are. And so here, where we were just now talking about the footpath was where the cattle were sold. And here was where poultry was sold. What you see is mostly from the 1800s because it's been restored, as we say. But if we then turn and look the other way, you'll see the notice higher above the shop front called Butcher Road and this is where the butchers were because they were on the edge of the, of the market as we know it today and if you look along the road you will see that there are some brownie coloured stones all through the middle and that is where there was a kennel as it was called or a channel where the butchers would throw all the bits they didn't want and they were then supposed to clear it up before they went home in the evening. So this is where the butchers were, and that is where they threw all the rubbish that they didn't want. There was a photograph of a sign called New Canal, and we're just by the corner where that is, and that is because when Salisbury was built in the 1200s, so that people could have a fresh water supply, there were little channels of water, and because they were made by people, they're called canals. There used to be one down this street, which actually you can see used to be right down the middle here, although it's now raised up in the middle. And by the side of it, underneath the sign that says Boston Tea Party, Old George Mall. Now that's where there used to be an inn, And if any of you have heard of Samuel Pepys, who was alive in the 1600s and was secretary to the Navy, he came to Salisbury and when he stayed at the Old George Inn, he was bitten by bedbugs, so he wasn't best pleased with Salisbury. If you look further past the Old George, 